Welcome. I am Catherine Pacelli, and I am an ordained minister, <laughs> and I also am a um, community chaplain, and I'm going to be doing the Bible study tonight. This is Gateway um, Church of Squim, and I have a couple of people I want to do a shout out to. I want to do a shout out, first of all, to Michelle, who is my tech gal, who <laughs> without her, I would not have known how to do anything. And I want to give a shout out to Leah, who brought beautiful sandwiches, and Linda, who brought cake, mm -hmm. and to Mike Dillman, who came here early this morning and set up the microphone for us all. They are our deacons here at Gateway, and they are amazing, and I just wanted to give them credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. And a shout out to Lynn, who's home, and uh, just to say we love you here at Gateway. Today, we're going to talk about forgiveness. And, you know, forgiveness is one of the most um sought words in the Bible, that and love, and I'm going to attempt to do this, okay, um, there is mentioned at least 127 times in both the Old and New Testament for the word forgiveness, forgiveness and love are the two biggest words in the Bible, so, why should we forgive? What's the big deal? Well, the Bible encourages us to forgive because God has commanded us to forgive each other. It's not a suggestion. It's a not, oh, you might think about it. It is a command that scripturally God wants us to forgive each other. Through the Bible, he encourages Christians to forgive others because we would want to be forgiven by others as well. Wouldn't we all want to do that? God uses forgiveness and our ability to forgive as the yardstick through which we may also receive forgiveness. Our friend Brett just talked about that on the break. You know, without us forgiving, he measures that. And if we want to be forgiven, then we need to forgive. There's also the fact that forgiveness is the one effective route through which we can let go of the toxicity that presents in the form of anxiety, anger, and stress. Lack of forgiveness is equated to maintaining some semblance of power within us, yet all the power belongs to and resides in God. So to break out of the shackles of this toxicity and to lead a happier, more peaceful life, forgiveness is essential. You know, sometimes we just want to keep it inside of us. You know, we don't want to share it. We don't want to deal with it. And we have that anxiety and anger when we get upset with people, we get angry with them. And and we, uh, you know, can't figure out, well, why don't they like us? Or what did we do? Or we, we get all kinds of stress. Mm -hmm. And it's not good for us. Now, we're going to talk about the three levels of forgiveness. We have exoneration. I didn't know that there were three levels of forgiveness. I just thought, you just forgive. That, that's it. Mm -hmm. Until I started to do some study. And exoneration is what we generally have in mind when we think of the word of forgiveness. It essentially means that the slate is completely wiped clean and the relationship is fully restored to its previous sense of innocence. Basically, exoneration means to forgive and forget, as the old saying goes. 
When you exonerate someone, it's as if the harmful action never took place at all. And wow, that would be absolutely tremendous if everyone that I wanted to forgive or have them forgive me could forget and forgive. Part of the reason why it can be so difficult, though, to forgive those who have committed transgressions against us, transgressions, that's a hard word to say, <laughs> and do, is that we believe forgiveness always means wiping the slate clean. Well, that isn't necessarily the case. I was really happy to find out that there are other levels of forgiveness because it's not a one-size-fits-all. Mm. So the next forgiveness, the level, is forbearance. The second level of forgiveness applies when an offender either makes a partial apology or lessens their apology by suggesting that you are also partially to blame for their wrongdoing. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> they may even explicitly state that you did something to cause them to behave badly. Oh, uh, it's all my fault. When an apology may in fact be offered here, it's usually not what was hoped for and may feel inadequate. And I think we talked a little bit about that um, tonight. Forbearance comes into play when the relationship at hand is one that matters to you. If the person is someone who is important to you and your life, you should exercise forbearance even if you bear no responsibility for what happened. Let me say that again. If the person is someone who is important in your life, you should exercise forbearance even if you bear no responsibility for what happened. Mm -hmm. Do you all have people that, you know, um, they're probably not going to give me the apology that, that I need, but mm -hmm. because, you know, of our, my relationship with them, I can kind of let it go, let go, let God work on it, because trying to elicit um, an apology that I think they should give is, is going to be very difficult. And I care enough about that person to want to just kind of let it go and have God deal with it in my heart. And the third level is release. Release is the lowest level of forgiveness and applies to situations in which the person who hurt you has never acknowledged any wrongdoing. That's a tough one. You know, he or she has neither apologized or has offered an incomplete or insincere apology. Apology or not, no reformations have been made, and the perpetrator has done little or nothing to improve the relationship. Mm -hmm. Some examples of where release may apply include survivors of child abuse. Mm -hmm people in business who are cheated by their partners, betrayal by friends or relatives, um, an ex-spouse, um, um, a sibling who has done something repeatedly to you throughout your childhood. Um, I, I know that uh, I have friends who have um, an older brother who terrorized his sisters. And he doesn't see what the big deal was about, but they harbor this resentment. And, you know, my advice to them, sometimes you just have to release it and let God work on your heart. So in conclusion of the three types 
of forgiveness, while it would be nice to be able to fully forgive, exonerate all those who have harmed us, this isn't always possible. Even the more provincial type of forgiveness that is forbearance isn't always an option in certain situations and relationships. But failing to let go of the past hurts, mm -hmm. it hurts us more than it will ever hurt the people who have done us wrong. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, they say that um, sarcasm and uh, resentment, while it, it, it hurts us, it's like um, it, it, we have this resentment ag against a person and it hurts us and we want them to hurt, but it doesn't hurt them, it hurts us. Yeah. And that's the thing, it, the forbearance isn't always an option in certain situations and relationships. So we have to remember that we have to let go of the hurts more than it will ever hurt the person who has done you wrong. Having the option of release available to us can take away a lot of our burden and allow us to live more positive and fulfilling lives. You know, it, it's like trying um, to kill them, but it kills us, <laughs> yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. Of course, releasing the pain and resentment is easier said than done, and it may require both time, prayer, and a concerted effort. Mm -hmm. Here's the, what I talked about, about reciprocal forgiveness. Mm. I think that is such a powerful illustration. You know, here we have Jesus with the thorns on his head, hugging this man who was clearly in distress. And the reason he wants God, Jesus wants us to forgive is he forgave us. He went on the cross. He died for our sins. And so we need to reciprocate by forgiving each other. Reciprocal forgiveness. Some would call it paying it forward. It is reciprocal because as I have loved you, so love one another. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 32. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Colossians 3, 13. This is some scriptural basis for forgiveness. And I'm going to stop here. Scriptural examples of forgiveness. Think of the story of the prodigal son who squandered his inheritance and came back crawling to his father. The ultimate example of forgiveness but also his brother's struggle to accept that forgiveness. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that. The father was magnanimous, and, and they slayed the fatted calf, and there was dancing and singing, and welcome back, you know, and it's an analogy of Christ welcoming us back. You have fallen, you have missed the mark, but Christ embraces us. Welcome back to, to the fold. But the brother, he has got to be just resentful. He, it, it, I just, I don't know, if I was him, I would not be a happy cat. I mean, I would not be dancing the happy dance that my brother 
<laughs> of his cooperativeness and arrogance. He had disappointed his father. You know, his father worried about him the whole time he was out traipsing around. Um, he comes back and acts like, oh, what's that thing? You know, here I go. <laughs> and the poor brother, I would be so, I would not be forgiving. Let me tell you that. And so out of all the three types of forgiveness, probably he is going to have to do the release because he just cannot bring himself, at least to this part, um, to forgive his brother or forgive his dad for putting on this big show and party. For it. So he's got two people that he can't forgive. He's upset because he was the good one, okay? And growing up, I was the good one. And yet, I felt that I wasn't appreciated. <laughs> Don't they know how wonderful I am? You know? And um, so, I can understand how, you know, the, the prodigal son will coming back but I can understand the brother. I mean, let's just call him Dave. You know, David. I mean, he he is just fit to be tied. And uh, so he would have to do the release. And he was he he will come into a place, hopefully where he can be forbearance and then work up to exoneration. But it's not happening now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's okay. As long as we're actively working on it, I think Dave's going to be doing a lot of writing, you know, <laughs> on the sand, whatever they write. <laughs> because, you know, it's just really hard, you know, for him to deal with this. The analogy, of course, is is that it he Christ welcomes us back, and and that's the the bottom. That's the important thing. But this also deals with forgiveness on a really big level. So this week, I want you to think a little bit more about the prodigal son. Um, possibly read it in scripture, and see what new insights that we can gain. So when I come back, and when I come back, we're going to be doing setting the stage um, on the prayer process to forgiveness, to reconciliation. And we'll be talking about that. So I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for tuning in and all of you for coming. It's been a great night. And... Uh, so blessings to you all. I'm going to say a little prayer, and then we'll, we will um, dismiss the class. Lord, I just thank you that you have forgiven us because we are such a flawed people. You know, we are selfish and self-centered. So, Lord, you know, work on us. Get us to a place where we are embracing each other and loving each other and not being so judgmental. I just ask that you just give me the ability to forgive my, my fellows, to forgive my family, to forgive those that just do wrong. Because without this forgiveness, you're not going to forgive me, Lord. So I ask this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kathy.